Killer Killer was um, shot back to back with another movie called Hellbride and Killer Killer was second on the shooting schedule. So in other words, by the time the crew came to be working on Killer Killer, they'd already shot an entire feature film and we had, I think, no break whatsoever between the two movies. So um, it was a hell of a summer, basically. Just the lunch, please. Just suddenly lunge towards the camera. And go. And cut. Um, we shot a lot of the kill sequences first. Um, I think going back and shooting two more at the end, if memory serves. Um, so, so we've got, for the first few days of shooting, we were really just getting a lot of the, the gory stuff in the cam. Because when it came to shooting at the former Worley Hospital, which was the location for the majority of the shoot, when it came to shooting there, it was quite a costly location for such a low-budget movie. And we knew we needed to get an absurd amount of footage in the can in a fairly limited space of time. So uh, anything that was more complicated than basically scenes of people talking we'd engineered in the script to take place in another environment where we'd have more control over it and um, longer to get it right. Because if we'd have been running around trying to get gore stuff done at Worley, um, we would have blown our entire shooting schedule and uh, the movie would never have been completed. It's starting to slow down, though. still jerky, but... Yeah. Oh, and... Action, please. Oh. That's right. Yeah, Joan, yeah, you are dead at this point, so just <laughs> no movement whatsoever, please. And action, please. And once again, and hold it on his eyes, though. The casting process was interesting, um, as always with these things. We, we brought back Cy Henty, who we'd worked with before. We'd, we'd worked with him on a movie called Trash House. Um, and we brought him back for, for Killer Killer because, uh, as Rosebrook, he, he just nailed it. We, we did ask him to audition. He came in and auditioned for us, and he just... I don't think Cy Henty really needs to audition for Jinx Media anymore. Um, we know what the man's capable of, and I think he's fantastic. Um, Richard Collins had also worked on Trash House previously with, it, uh, with us, um... And when I sort of had preliminary talks with him about possibly being involved in Killer Killer, I'd said to him, well, how, you know, we've got this role Perry that I'm thinking might work for you. How, how would you feel about shaving your head? And he said, oh, I don't really think shaving my head. Let me go away and think about it. And then he phoned me back um, and said, I've got a better idea. What if I've got chunks missing? Like they tried to hold him down and he just wriggled and wriggled and wriggled and eventually they went uh, and gave up. And I thought, all right, okay, uh, Richard has clearly got a handle on exactly where this character should be going, and, and so we, we gave the role to, to him. Um, Dutch Door Boys was, was new. We, we'd never worked with him previously, um, and I think he brought uh, an interesting volatility to Lawrence. I think in the script, there were probably something like eight uses of the word fuck from Lawrence, and I think by the time <laughs> by the time Dutch had finished with the role, um, it it's not just up in double figures. I think it's knocking towards triple. I've never sat down and counted it, but uh... what are you going to do? Keep us back after school? Shut up! You can't. So uh, Dutch did bring a real um, anger to the role uh, that possibly on the page had looked slightly quieter. Um, no regrets, I thought he was fantastic. 
Uh, elsewhere in the cast, we had uh, James Cavaz, who we'd only just finished working with on Hellbride. He, he was one of the guys that had worked on both movies. Um, and so he sort of came to the role fresh from a, a previous role with us. He had a real handle on the intellect um, of Harris. It was his idea, for example, the the medical records that Harris is wandering around for the whole sort of first 20 minutes of the movie. He's, he's carrying a clipboard. Uh, and James's theory on this had been as soon as all the rooms were open, the first thing Harris would have done was gone and found everybody else's medical records, which much like um, Richard Collins with the the hair cutting thing, it was just one of those signs, we've got the right actor here, um, someone who got inside the mind of them, and uh, uh, yeah, that, that was really good stuff. Yeah, some of the, uh, the other roles of the psychopaths filled out by stand-up comedians, in the case of uh, Danny James and Scott Denyer, who did a wonderful job as that kind of double act, uh, and Rami Hilmi as well, um, as the poor doomed uh, Wallace, who, who's not really on screen very long. But of course that is him in the opening sequence with the babysitter in the shower as well, which some people work out and some people don't, but that is Rami. Um, the idea being that that's his vision of the same things that happen to everybody else when they, these things occur. Wally was an interesting and creepy place to shoot. Uh, I'm by nature quite sceptical. I'm, uh, I'm not someone who particularly buys into ideas of ghostly apparitions. Um, but it had a weird vibe to it. The uh, I Am Not Alone scratched into the wall uh, that you see in the opening montage. Um, we didn't do that, that was there. There was quite a few things like that where this had functioned as a, as a hospital for some quite unwell mentally people for a very, very long time. Um, and you do find curious stuff. Uh, the chapel where the final confrontation is shot um, we found butterfly wings sort of pressed into the edges of the brickwork. That was our photographer Debbie Atwell found them uh, and then took a lot of photos of them as well to commemorate the event. But it was just little details like that that really were fairly creepy. You'd find photographs um, tucked in places and evidence of the various troubled folks who'd been there. Um, yeah, it, as I said, I'm... I'm by nature quite sceptical. Uh, I am not a believer in ghosts, but by the time it came to leave Worley, I was quite glad to be leaving. Um, another day, another two days, I wouldn't have been hugely enthusiastic about extending the shoot. Having said that, the shoot was, it, it was mayhem. I mean, it was very, very, very fast. We had a huge amount to do. Uh, I do have some regrets, I think from a sound point of view, um, it, our, our wonderful sound guy James Mitchell was really on a loser to nothing uh, trying to shoot six different accents in the uh, varying uh, sound volumes in the most echoey environment known to man uh, it, it was just a really 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 hard task uh, and I know that for again for um, viewers outside Britain those accents can provide a, a a problem in terms of intelligibility as well. So we're aware that um, some of the sound didn't uh, didn't translate in the way that we'd hoped it would. Um, but overall, I think the movie came together really well. It's very much as it was in the script. I think the performances are really strong. Uh, we had fun shooting it. It was tiring, but it was fun. Um, and yeah, at the end of the day, the location, although it took up the vast amount of the budget, uh, gave the film a look that no other film has really got and will have again. I mean, the, the location's now been knocked down and turned into luxury flats, so it's just not there anymore, um, which I kind of like. I think that brings a closure to the, the thing uh, that's quite fitting for such a dark little story. Um, I like that no one else is going to go, that we can't go back and shoot Killer Killer 2 there at some point, because um, it's just not there. 